I'm Julie Zenner along with Dennis Anderson and we've got a great show coming up on Almanac North. St. Louis County officials are worried that lingering damage from last summer's flood will continue to show up during the spring thaw. They're urging state lawmakers not to divert unused flood relief funds. The 15th annual Homegrown Music Festival begins this Sunday in the Twin Ports. We've got live music in the studio tonight from Homegrown Favorites, Three Songs Sunday. And we'll bring you the week's business headlines and a news file story from 25 years ago. So stay right where you are. Almanac North is next. Hello and welcome to Almanac North. Thanks for watching. Denny, everybody was outside enjoying today's warmer weather today. I actually sat on the deck for about two hours and read. I had a four foot snow pile on one side, two feet of snow on the other, but it was warm. Uh, great, great <laughs> image. The, yeah. This quick spring thaw is on the minds of our first guest tonight also. All right, it certainly is, Julie. Thank you. Now, earlier this week, St. Louis County officials reopened Ives Road north of Duluth after repairing a large hole in the road. County highway engineers believe conditions for the hole were created during last summer's flooding. Now, as the spring thaw continues, county officials expect more flood-related damage to appear. And that's why they joined in a news conference this week in an effort to stop a possible diversion of flood relief funding. Here to explain is Chris Dahlberg. He is the chair of the St. Louis County Board, whose district includes the flood-ravaged Fond du Lac neighborhood. And Kevin Gray is the St. Louis County Administrator, and I want to say thanks to both of you for being here. And Commissioner Thank you for Dahlberg. The opportunity. Yeah, are, there, are we still feeling the effects of last June's flooding on our roads? Well, absolutely, and I think one of the issues that was just brought out is we're, we're going to keep discovering these issues. For example, a lot of the gravel underneath the sub base gets washed out, but we can't even measure all of that. So as time goes along, that's when we start to discover more problems. Mm -hmm. Maybe not only the spring, but throughout the summer and right. perhaps right. further down the road. Yeah. Kevin, how concerned are you over the region potentially losing some of the, the funding from the state that's been earmarked for flood relief? Uh, uh, Hopefully not very concerned, but the fact that it's in play or in the discussion always raises uh, your antenna. Uh, Commissioner Dahlberg uh, uh, assisted, uh, participated in a press conference with uh, Mayor Ness and Pat Henderson from ARDC, and uh, it's a really important issue to us on two fronts. Uh, as the commissioner was talking about uh, these um, uh, sinkholes or uh, exaggerated potholes, uh, but more importantly, even for us uh, in the, the county, is that we've got $5 million of additional work to do that is, needs to be uh, adjusted for in the flood bill. So we're hopeful that money will stay there, and uh, we're going to have uh, the lingering effects. The city expects some similar issues with substructure. So uh, it's very important that the money stay there, and we're just here to remind it. I think there's a commitment and leadership from our legislators to do so. So, Kevin, is this money that's in the bank, so to speak, just in case we need it down the road? Uh, this is money that's in the flood relief bill. And remember, right. they put this bill together very quickly because speed was a top concern. Commissioner Dahlberg was a, a big part of talking to our legislative uh, delegation and the governor's office, and uh, some of the estimates that went into different uh, pots of money, if you will, for the appropriations. And uh, now we're finding out we need to make a couple of adjustments in those uh, estimates from that last August and to make sure that there's money there uh, for these unforeseen uh, incidences such as the Ives Road uh, sinkhole that you uh, referenced. Mm -hmm. So the money, the money in question, what specifically was that supposed to be used for? Well, I believe that was the Minnesota Investment Fund, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, uh, several pots. One of them is the Minnesota Investment Fund, yes. And, and, and you know, sort of the feeling is... Uh, 
I don't think there's an appreciation that uh, their feeling was we're not moving fast enough. And I think that's an unreal expectation. You know, we, we're trying to do the best we can. Uh, Kevin mentioned the fact that I was down at the legislature working, lobbying uh, them. And uh, first, hats off to the legislature. It was a bipartisan effort, and they really have been good about this. But also, I, I want to say hats off to the St. Louis County team. I call them the public works fast and furious because the mayor and I went down and we, we lobbied it. The legislature told them the problem, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without the team that we have. They're truly exceptional. And uh, they were down there identifying projects. We had 880 unique projects that they put together, and the time and effort that they put was truly amazing. So 10 months after the flood, what still needs to be done? Well, some of the projects, and, and, and one of the things is you can only move so quickly. And the issue that we had, for example, my, my district was hit the hardest. And we have two main arteries that go up the side of the hill. One of them is Haynes Road. Mm -hmm. One of them is Highland. At one point, we had number two that was closed. And so Highland's uh, impact, the traffic count, increased from 3,000 a day to 10,000 a day because of the closure. So you know what that does to the road beyond what the flood already did. So now we're working on Haynes Road. And when Haynes Road is done, which is going to be an I keep saying it's going to be done at the end of November. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, then we have to go right to Highland Street. And there was some rules with FEMA as far as you have to have the projects done or initiated within a certain time. And we are getting some leeway working with the legislature on this because it just wasn't possible. We couldn't close Highland and, and Haynes. Yeah. There's been a large culvert at Highland. Is that going to be a bridge? Yeah, that's going to be actually the largest spanned bridge in the state of Minnesota, which is amazing. Yep. Is there an ongoing process to go back over those areas where the, the flood damage occurred and kind of assess what remains to be done so that you have some actual numbers to, to maybe take back down to the legislature and say, hey, we, we really need this money for X, X, and X? Absolutely. We've been doing that all along, firming up our estimates. Uh, uh, quite frankly, though, we did a lot of work last year, uh, about $15 million worth of work. So we're hopeful that we're going to have very isolated instances like the Ives Road uh, sinkhole. Uh, but we want people to be on the alert for that and then watch for that around culverts and bridge abutments. Uh, but this year we're doing $15 million work of, worth of additional flood work. Uh, of course, the, uh, the big project is the Haynes Road project yeah. this year. And uh, plus uh, probably uh, six to eight bridges that uh, we're going to be replacing or significantly improving. So we've got a significant uh, effort this, uh, this year yet. Other than in the city, is there work elsewhere in the county that still needs to be completed? There is, and, and the other thing is there's not only road work, but one of the issues that came up that I, I talked about in the mayor's press conference is the St. Louis River, which was amazing. And so, you know, fishing season is going to be opening May 15th, just a matter of, of days. That's a, one of the only bodies of water that actually has fresh water that's open. Most of it's filled with ice. And so the interesting issue is the U.S. Coast Guard is not able at this point to, they used to put buoys all the way up to Chambers Grove. Now they're not able to do that because of the situation mm -hmm. that sandbars have formed along there. And so this is a, a water navigable way that had been open since 1850. They used to have passengers, uh, steamships that went up to Fond du Lac. And so, the, but this is a tremendous Im economic impact to our area. So these are things that are just starting to, you know, still coming to light. Mm -hmm. Any flood concerns with the, the heavy snowfall that we've had this spring, that that could cause some additional flooding? You know, the information we have to date is uh, that, uh, at least locally, uh, we expect a, a furious runoff, but not uh, anything like the floods of last year. And, and I think it's going to be very manageable. But uh, we'll see. These uh, estimates change as we uh, monitor yeah. the amount of snow and the, how fast it's dissipating. Uh -huh. Can and you? What, oh, I'm, Go ahead. I, I was just wondering about the, the impact on the county budget with all of those snow plows that had to go out in April that normally get to stay locked in the shed. Well, <laughs> there is an impact on three fronts. Uh, Obviously, the overtime, we had a tremendous effort by our team, and, and unfortunately, too many of those uh, tremendous efforts that took place, lots of snow events. Uh, fuel costs, of course, jump up. Um, uh, the good news there is that the fuel costs have been below our expectations, so we've uh, been managing that. And lastly, of course, our salt uh, uh, investment uh, was pretty significant this year. But we made it through. I think we're going to be in good shape. And uh, uh, we stretched the budget a little bit. But uh, yeah. more importantly, we responded to the snow events. Can you give us some idea, maybe a, an educated guess, as to how many miles of county roadway needed attention after the floods? Oh, uh, I think the number was in the range of almost 700 miles. Uh, a lot of that was shoulder work. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, bridges. Bridges. And then, uh, unfortunately, some of our roads. And that's Dozens of bridges? 
Dozens, yes. You know, and, and the, if that's the interesting thing, maybe on a closing point, that people don't realize about St. Louis County, but we're actually bigger than three states in the union, mm -hmm. and we have 3,000 square mi 3, miles of roadway, 1,600 gravel, 1,400 paved. So the challenge, even on a good day, is amazing. But when you're faced with this type of a rainy day, uh, beyond any expectation, it was truly uh, incredible. But again, to the St. Louis County Public Works, the, the work that they did, Kevin and I were joking, they've got the B team tonight <laughs> because the A team, they need to take some sleep and some break with their families. And uh, we really appreciate our, our our thanks go out to them. All right. Kevin Gray, St. Louis County Commissioner. Chris Dahlberg, St. Louis uh, Administrator. Chris Dahlberg, Commissioner. Thank you both very much. You got you. promoted again. <laughs> <laughs>
open mic at Thirsty Pagan on Sundays, hence Three Song Sundays, because open mic was you played three songs. Mm -hmm. So then Dan and I continued with Three Song Sunday. Now, there are a lot of bands locally, the Twin Ports, Duluth and Superior, both have become uh, quite known for its music. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's pretty amazing. Um, I just talked to some people from Seattle. They were at a show in town, and they were pretty amazed at the music scene in this, in this town for the size. It was, it I think it's because everybody hibernates and they need something to do. <laughs> 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 yes, and yeah. winter's like we had this winter. Sure. You know. But there have been some you know, big name uh, bands that have come out of the Twin Ports. Uh, some of them, of course, head to the Twin Cities to play, mm -hmm. bigger venues than this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Is there a sense of pride as a musician to be part of the Homegrown Festival? I would say it's more honor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's definitely an honor yeah. to continue to be a part of it, mm -hmm. even just from the beginning. So we did brush, it was first brush strokes. That was our first show, actually. Mm -hmm. was Homegrown 2005, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself visiting all of the other venues when you're not oh, playing? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you're That's part of it as a I spectator. And then you have to balance it so you're not <laughs> yeah. like exhausted. And yeah. like, I still have to wake up and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, I would think you'd get to know your audiences as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of feedback do you get from them? What what are the, what are they hearing when they when they see well, and, and watch and listen to you? I think first of all, it's the audience is always so diverse. I mean, you look out into an audience and uh -huh. it's like so it's all ages. It's I don't know. It's pretty diverse. And feedback. I mean, we have a lot of banter when we we're, we're perform. silly. We're, quite we're pretty silly. silly. So it's more. I think like what I've heard from a lot of people that come to shows are that they appreciate our banter more than the music because more they're laughing. More than the music? Yeah. You never told me <laughs> that. <laughs> well, as much there's, as. There's it's, the banter. It's more entertaining, <laughs> apparently. Uh -huh. So sure. getting people to laugh and keeping people engaged, I think, is important. And we've played mostly listening room venues anyways. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's the type of group I would, or duo, mm -hmm. I guess we'd be. Good. Well, we are really eager to hear you play. So we're going to kind of let you go and get set up and uh, enjoy some music here in the studio. All right. So appreciate you coming in. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, as Dan and Stephanie get ready to play for us, here are the basics of this year's Homegrown Festival. It all begins this Sunday at Tycoon's downtown, where WDSE's playlist crew will be recording music that will be featured on our local arts program this coming Thursday night. Music and other artsy events run through Sunday, May 5th. There's a whole lot going on, so the best way to keep up is to pick up a homegrown field guide or check things out online at DuluthHomegrown.com. And if you want to see Three Song Sunday, you'll want to head over to Sir Benedict's in Duluth on Monday night. They'll be playing starting at 10 p.m. And uh, now, with their song, Happily, here's Three Song Sunday. Take it away. Sing and you go, and you go, and you go. 
It's time now for a look at the week's top business stories from Business North. Cliffs Natural Resources revealed some positive news for the Iron Range this week. In the corporation's quarterly conference call, Chief Executive Joseph Caraba said the company was successful at producing a direct reduced iron pellet at its North Shore mine in Silver Bay. During the full-scale production test, the iron pellet met targeted specifications. The so-called DRI pellets are anticipated to represent the industry's future because they can be used by mini mills that don't have an expensive blast furnace. Caraba said tests will continue throughout 2013 using a variety of ore blends. Three well-known names in the business community received top awards Wednesday at the 21st annual Joel Leibovitz Entrepreneurial Success Awards. Shel Knutson, retiring dean of the Leibovitz School of Business and Economics, received the Business Person of the Year Award. The Lifetime Achievement Award went to Rob Link and Lee Anderson, who have developed well-known building projects, including the Technology Village and Whelan Building in Duluth. Winners were also announced in several other entrepreneurial categories. To clarify an item that aired last week, individuals buying into the Delta Diner to assist with long-term improvements have no business relationship with a Shawamigan Bay group focused on finding ways to fund local businesses. Now, although the concepts share a similar vision of keeping money within the local economy, the parties involved are not in any way related. For more on these and other stories, visit businessnorth.com. Well, we're going to hear more music from Three Song Sunday in a minute, so call right now if you have a comment on this week's show. Dial 218-788-2849 to leave a message or send an email to almanacnorth at wdse.org. And be sure to visit the WDSE website for a program schedule, news and updates about WDSE, and more on your favorite PBS shows. And Denny, it should be a great weekend to get outside, enjoy the spring, walk around, catch some music. This is definitely going to be an outdoor weekend, at least during the daylight hours. <laughs> All right, it sure will be. Yeah. Well, for Denny and the crew here at Almanac North, I'm Julie Zenner. We'll leave you tonight with more music from Three Song Sunday. Dan and Stephanie, it's all yours. Once upon a lonely summer's day I gazed at you and fell in love And as I walked away I tried not to figure What could have been, what might have been, what should have Long
longest time I walked along the lovely sea And looked at a ship from long ago It seemed out of place As it sailed the horizon It made me sad as it turned to go The face in the mirror Don't seem so bad It's bound to get back Nothing to show Lousy summer too And maybe by spring I'll finally take off Almanac North Arts Extra is provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.